This week, Patrick Leahy will bid a formal goodbye to his colleagues in the U.S. Senate, a place sometimes described as the world's most exclusive club and one he's been part of for 48 years. Two or three years ago, we started thinking about where, where this is going, what would be the legacy. I felt one, it was time we wanted to go. Uh, we figured out between primaries and general elections, state's attorney and Senate. I've been on the ballot in Vermont 24 times, and that should be enough for most people. That time has now come. We spoke with Vermont's longest ever serving senator from Washington, where he was still working on a sweeping budget deal about all that he'll miss, about what he won't, and what comes next. Senator Patrick Leahy from Washington, welcome back to NBC5. Good to be with you, Stu. These last few days must feel odd, having served almost half a century in Washington, now saying goodbye, and yet probably also pretty satisfying. It is satisfying because I can look back at everything I've been able to accomplish from things for Vermont, things internationally, and things nationally. Uh, far, far more than I ever would have thought possible when I first came here. And we're going to wrap up with a, the largest appropriations bill I put through the, uh, through the Senate. And what I will miss are a number of the senators in both parties that I've been able to work with over the years. But Marcel and I are just looking forward so much to coming home, not have to get on a plane every weekend or every other weekend, and just be with family and friends. I'll, let me, we'll come to that in a moment, but let me ask you about a theme in your memoir, uh, The Road Taken, you refer to sort of the downward arc of the Senate uh, in your later years in Washington, uh, pretty collegial in the 70s and 80s, pretty toxic today. What is responsible for that? It's hard to pinpoint it. It's, I think people, uh, instead of spending time debating and working on legislation, the, the thing is they, they want to go get a 10 second or 20 second or 30 second sound bite on the news or on social media. Uh, and many of these people do it because they're either running for something else or they, uh, they enjoy seeing their faces there. They're not there to do the work that needs to be done. When you have to actually work to get legislation through instead of just talking about it, then you work both Republicans and Democrats together because you have to. Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to say the Senate was always perfect. It's always had its problems. But when I came here, it was more the conscience of the nation. Now it becomes the soundbite of the nation, and that's wrong. That doesn't help anybody. There's only one hundred of us to represent over 300 million Americans. I think we have an obligation not to our political future, but to the country and to work with each other. Uh, no one senator, Republican or Democrat, has all the answers. Together we can. I passed more bipartisan legislation than any senator serving. But in that, we've had to get to know each other. We have to work with each other. You can't do that if you're just running to a TV studio and then running for the airport. Let me ask you about some of your personal uh, memories. You know, in your career, you've, you've traveled extensively, met a lot of famous people. And by the way, I, I still remember the time you introduced me to Bono from U2 at the DNC convention in Boston a few years back. Thank you for that. Uh, but of all the luminaries that you've met, one or two stand out? There are there are some, and uh, you probably the one that I, I've gotten to know over the years who really inspires me is the Dalai Lama, and uh, I remember when the last time he was here in Washington, he wanted to say goodbye to Marcel and myself. He took Marcel's 
head in his hands. He brought his forehead up to hers, held it there for nearly a minute, and dead silence in the room. And he said, I've always loved you and Patrick. And if I don't see you again in this world, I'll see you in the next. That, you know, met presidents and rock stars, Bonnell's a good friend. Uh, but this is something that we'll never forget. Now, Bonnell did have fun with me back here a few days ago. He was here doing with his book. And he'd been at, uh, of course, at the Kennedy Center Honors. He's speaking at the National Cathedral. He's on stage, about 1,200 people there. And I was stuck in downtown for a bit, so I kind of tried to slip in quietly. They had a seat over in the corner for me. And when I got in, he looks up and he says, oh, St. Patrick is here. <laughs> Everybody, go to St. Patrick. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, I'm trying to be anonymous. Well. Uh, hard, though, when you're chairman of the Appropriations Committee and uh, president pro tem of the Senate, you've chaired agriculture, uh, judiciary. Um, for all you've done, though, you know, um, you couldn't ever make it easy to be a dairy farmer uh, back in Vermont. I mean, there must be some things that frustrate you. Oh, there are. You know, I, I grew up in Vermont. My the Leahy's came to Vermont in the 1850s. I was the first one to get a college degree. My sister, the second one, I feel privileged with the, everything I've learned there. And I see things I'd like to be able to do for Vermont that I can't. But the idea for organic farming came from sitting around a farmer's table mm. uh, in Vermont and fought for a couple of years to get standards for that. Everybody said it'd be a crunchy granola sort of thing. It's a $60 billion industry now, as a Vermont idea. A lot of the environmental legislation I've passed has come from Vermont ideas. In fact, I drafted the and wrote the first update in the patent legislation in 50 years. It came from hearing what people needed for patents in Vermont and we ended up having the most patents per capita of any state in the union that year. The minority leader, uh, Mitch McConnell, with whom you disagree on a whole lot, uh, lauded you on the Senate floor the other day, as you know, compared you to Kennedy and Stevens and in a way. But Pat's legendary service to the people of Vermont has been more than a vote tally. Over eight terms, he's made a point of becoming not just a familiar name, but a familiar, but a friendly face and a committed servant to his neighbors. That must have felt good. It did, and I thanked him for it. I also thanked him for applauding Marcel as being part of that. You know, I was told early on by a senator who supported me for committees, even though he's different ideologically, he said, we have workhorses and show horses. You're a workhorse, and you always keep your word. I'll support you. And that's always meant a lot to me. There are wonderful people here in both parties. And if you can get away from where you, the rhetoric counts, but deal with the reality, you can do a lot. And I, I appreciate those friendships. I've actually served, somebody figured out, of all the senators in the history of the country, I've served with 20% of them. What Can is you, the young? Actually, 20.1%. All right. But, uh, and, and some were really wonderful senators, and some had the title senator. <laughs> we won't go there. But no, please. What is, what is the best part of being Pat Leahy? Being able to come home with Marcel and be in Vermont. It, it, I don't say that uh, because people might expect it. It is the best part. The fact we can walk in a store and somebody say, hey, I saw your cousin yesterday and welcome home. And that, that means so much. But you're uh, about to go from third in line to the presidency. 
with armed Capitol Police driving you everywhere to private citizen again, that's going to be a big change. I guess I guess you will be able to sleep a little later. I can sleep a little later. I have to find my own parking space now. But in the the armed guards that travel with me are the nicest people in the world. They do everything possible to be unobtrusive. But I love going with one of our kids. Now our grandkids who are old enough to drive. Uh, going with Marcel, we, we just love being able to just be relaxed. How many I won't grandkids? wear a tie very much. How many grandkids do you have now? Five. Wow. You're going to live full time in Vermont, uh, in Middlesex. Uh, are you going to sell the house in Virginia? Oh, we're sitting with the house in Virginia is up for sale right now. Uh, and the big thing is packing up. Where in heck did all this material go? Marcel used to joke that the reason I kept running for re-election <laughs> is I didn't want to have to go down and clean out the basement. <laughs> but uh, no, we'll sell that. We're also going to have an apartment in Burlington. Because I, I will uh, have an office at the University of Vermont, and they have my archives, and that's several truckloads worth of archives. We'll be working on that. Um, we have a lot of friends, relatives in Burlington. We were married in Burlington, and can walk you know, down the lake, he said, and walk along the lake. So we'll, we'll enjoy that. The farm is a place of great quietness in, in Middlesex. But we will uh, we'll have to cut that down considerably. What is what is your hope for retirement? Uh, and and candidly, how is your health now? My health is great. You know, I had this terrible fall this spring. I spent a month in the hospital. This uh, morning, I went in for my checkup on that. Doctor said, well, I was going to have you come back again in two or three months. You don't need to. You've gone way beyond where you're supposed to be at this time. And uh, I said, you mean for an 82-year-old man? He said, no, for a 42-year-old man. That made me feel kind of good. I said, does that mean Marcel and I can go back scuba diving? He said, sure. I will not scuba dive in Lake Champlain during the winter, I, I assure you. You'd find uh, the water would get your full attention uh, right now. but uh, Even though I, we've both gone scuba diving a number of times in Lake Champlain in the summer, <laughs> it's a little bit different than the Caribbean. But uh, no, yeah. I, I think the thing is, I'll have a chance to do things I may uh, some want me to do a, a more of a book tour than I was able to with, with my book, and I, I will do that. Uh, we'll come down to Washington periodically. We've got some kids and grandkids in the Washington area. And there'll be an attraction. There are uh, some boards who want me to speak at them, and I'll be willing to do that. But my attention will be really focused on Vermont. And the beauty of Vermont, I could say, look, this will be worthwhile. I might be able to help here. This, not so much. And I'll take the things that count. U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy, congratulations. Thank you for your service, and thanks for being here with us this morning. Thank you, Stu. I'll see you back at home in Vermont. Senator-elect Peter Welch will take Leahy's seat January 3rd.